Okay, we have about five minutes for questions. Uh, I'm going to start out, and if anybody has a question, obviously raise their hands. So one of the things that I want to chat about is, is just finding your purpose. And, and Mark, you and I and Ian have been talking a lot about purpose, purpose in the brand, but it's also purpose in, in, in yourself. Uh, and so what advice would you give to this audience in terms of finding purpose within oneself? Because that's a, that's a long journey. And I know that f some people, let's just say like Zuckerberg, might find it at 19. And some people may not find it until they're 72. Or they may never find it. Uh, but I think it's, it's always a journey of, of self-awareness to determine what you really ought to be doing in this life. And then that translates into a career. So how would, what would you uh, provide in terms of advice? Big yeah, question. That's a great question. Um, look, I think that, <clears throat> I think it is, it's, it's soul searching. You know, I think there's a, a number of ways that I've found effective. Probably the most effective for me is, just a simple term I have for it is thought time. You know, when you read about, you mentioned uh, Steve Jobs, you know, Bill Gates, other thought leaders and writers, they take time. They build time into their schedules to think Right? How often do we have a chance to do that? And I'll tell you, it was, um, I started doing that when I was a Peace Corps volunteer and I started doing it through business school and I did it during my, the, the businesses I ran. Everything I did with Zico came from half an hour, 30, 40 minutes, hour sessions, which were thought time for more. Literally sitting with pen and paper, what do I want to do with my life? What do, what do I value? What's interesting to me? You know, what do I care about? What do I love? And it took you know, 10 years of that to do Zico, and, I, and, I, and I've been doing that since, and, I, and it continues to evolve. So I think there's a, there's a process of self-discovery, self-awareness, you know, I'll use this corny word, but it's self-love, but, but that rarely comes about if you don't give it attention, take the time, and prioritize it like you do everything else in your life. Yeah, thank you. Uh, and in terms of purpose to profit, uh, clearly, you know, you're working with large organizations. You worked at VF Corp, a $14 billion company. You're now with about a billion dollar company. And, and do you sometimes struggle with that in terms of, you know, convincing folks that, that purpose has a meaning? Because I know that as we, as we look up, as we're marketing executives, it's oftentimes about immediate ROI. The purpose, the profit through purpose takes a longer period of time. Do you, do you have that struggle and, and how do you address it? Absolutely. I have it by using a word that uh, was said right at the beginning uh, is grit and it might actually be why I track to the spirit, the spirit perseveres. I mean, at the end of the day, it is about resilience and you're holding on to your cause and then also setting your boundaries and knowing what, when to let go. But I have found by spending time with the people and making the, the, in the organization and having them rise up and say, look, I need more meaning from this, that it's worked. Now, what we have done is by bringing in, when you can afford it, in big companies like that or was it P&G, done pretty superior ROI studies, that it really shows that if you build your brand equity, that directly translates to total shareholder return. And there's enough literature on that and so I went from a much more on the creative side to building this ridiculous MROI practice that is very deep, very numerical, 44 studies across the world proving um, how the marketing mix could be changed and how the messaging could change. So there's these curves. One is efficiency and the other is effectiveness. We spend a lot of time on efficiency. The win is effectiveness, which is when the curve jumps up because for the exact same amount of money, your message is better and more meaningful, and it jumps up. And so we proved that that happened, and it was clearly purpose-driven. Um, so it, it does take time. I don't expect them always to get it, and that's why you ask for forgiveness and not permission a lot, and you just do it, and surprise, surprise, the results come forward. To be clear, your company, though, has to believe in it. Um, Procter & Gamble, their still stated mission was to improve people's uh, lives. And they really did believe it. And the technology went into, they do it. And their advertising became more that way. They wanted to make people's lives easier. So difficult to walk into a meeting room and say, I want $10 million because I believe in saving giraffes. That won't work, I can tell you that. But if you can lead up to how that can attach to sales and people because it means something to the people that buy our product, that's where you get it. So our job is to connect the purpose to the consumers that buy our product and show how we can build 
uh, through delivering that purpose more. But it's, 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 it's tough, and you better lead with the numbers first just to whet their appetite and then start talking about the real stuff. Any questions? One more question for you, Mark. So, so when Zico is, is on, on the shelf, or any one of your products that you've invested in, which are many, what, is you, what do you want consumers to think? What's the first thing in a millisecond that you want them to think when they see that product? Is it about saving the world? Is it about health? Is it about, or is it about the products and features of that benefit? Yeah, what, great, what gets them to reach out? Great question. It is not saving the world. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> uh, there's re plenty of research that supports that. And I think uh, Ian hit on this uh, very importantly, right? It is the foundation. It is not the promise, right? And, yeah. and so, and, and there, there are those values. So it's different for every company's, right? Uh, and I can tell you, Red Bull was a model for us with Zico. The word I wanted people to think about with, with, with Zico was replenishment. One word. When you're hungover, when you're at the end of a yoga class, when you're at the end of a, uh, a, a, a you know, 50 mile bike ride, replenishment, right? And I always believed if we could own that word, that's something. I find that these purpose-driven driven businesses, the best way to market this is let that be deeper. You know, let that be something people explore and expose. And I'll tell you, I had this, uh, this run-in with the guy, that the founder of Rebel, very dear friend of mine. We were button heads because he kept saying, Mark, we're not talking enough about the purpose. We're not talking enough about anti-slavery. We're not talking about all the work we're doing in Peru and Thailand and these other places. And my comment was, Dave, do you want to have a little business that you know, earns you, you know, $100,000 a year to help, your, help this issue, or do you want a, a, a hundred, you know, $300 million a year business that throws off $3 million a year that you can help? He said, I want the latter, right? So my message to him was, we got to figure out that message, why consumers are going to want it first, then let it cascade. Well, today, three years later, it's still not a massive brand. We're doing partnerships with Whole, Su Whole Foods that celebrate that purpose, but consumers already knew that they were coming to Rebel for a, co a non-dairy coffee substitute for an afternoon pick-me-up. That was it. Shouldn't, shouldn't Zico have partnered with Red Bull then? For the morning after, Red Bull vodka? <laughs> we we didn't need to. I'll, I'll tell you a little, a little secret. Probably, they may have changed by now, but I'd say you know 30% of the hardcore Red Bull athletes during our prime were drinking Zico behind the scenes. Uh. <laughs> they're getting paid by Red Bull to have it up there, and they're drinking in the back room. And you know what y'all take? Back room all day long. You know? Absolutely agree. Sure. Thank okay. you very much, Ian Douglas, okay. Mark Rampola. Thanks, guys. Questions later if you want. Thanks.